let's do a bit of cyber security. Starting next month, you will be paying an extra 3% on the communication service tax and what many now call talk tax. It will mean an increase in the cost of your telephone calls, text messages, internet data, and other telecommunication services. The Finance Minister, Ken Voyata, announcing the measure in the 2019 mid-year budget review explained the increment is to raise revenue to fund and to develop a foundation for the creation of a viable technology ecosystem in the country. Well, what does that even mean? We'll be talking about, uh, about it shortly. But that system was supposed to well, comprise, among others, systems to identify and combat cybercrime, protect users of information, technology, and combat money laundering, as well as other financial crimes. The increase will not be earmarked. However, the sharing ratio will be adjusted in such a manner that the national youth employment programs continue to receive the same portions as they currently receive. And those, that's a quote from the uh, finance minister's uh, mid-year budget delivery in Parliament. Let's get on talking about what's going to happen. Some have raised concerns about the hike and others have raised issues about the lack of consultations um, for this. How big is this risk to this country? I have here in the studio National Cyber Security Advisor Dr. Albert Ntribuesiako so we can have this conversation. Dr. Ntribuesiako, thank, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Uh, thank you, Gifty, uh, for having me. And I trust me. that we're, we're in safe hands, our cyber space is in safe hands. Well, it depends on uh, how much we get. <laughs> <laughs> really? From the Does CST it depend on how much red? we get? Okay, uh, well, let's get into the details okay. on that. Well, first, let help us to understand what, and, and I know we've had this Correct. conversation over and over again. Let's begin by trying to understand the um, what we mean Correct. as far as cyber security is concerned, just to give our viewers, those who are perhaps right. joining us for the first time, the understanding so they can follow us. Correct. Uh, I give to thank you once again for giving us opportunity. You did raise an important uh, subject matter of uh, people raising some concerns. Mm. I think technically we have a responsibility also to explain uh, matters to, to the citizens why the need to invest in cyber security. I did, you know, when you asked me a question of whether we are in safe hands, I did respond by saying it depends on uh, not really about the money, but our investment in cyber speed. I think we need to put this on record. Okay. Uh, our state of readiness with respect to our cyber security is equal and proportional to how well we invest across all levels. Mm -hmm. we, we're talking of capacity building in government sector, but also in the private sector. Uh, capacity building, not just technology, but awareness creation, uh, legislation, and also you know, complying with certain best practices to, to secure our digital ecosystem. And, okay. and it's, it's necessary we bring this matter uh, uh, up for discussion. Okay. So whilst we're discussing it, can we focus a bit more on Ghana, the, the sort of exposure or the risk exposure, Ghana's risk exposure as far as cyber, the cyber cyberspace is concerned? Concern. I think the background is key. What are we seeing? Um, we have a number of digitalization initiatives being implemented. Digital initiatives are all over the place. Paperless port, uh, mobile money interoperability system is also being deployed, e justice system, uh, e procurement, passport application. Just a few weeks ago, the vice president mentioned that one pilot with the Ministry of Tourism uh, with respect to uh, revenue collection uh, through digital platform has resulted in the increase in revenue by fourfold, four times. This is evidence of how important uh, the idea of digitalizing our public services mean, mean to Ghana. And okay. I think the government has invested heavily in that area. Now the question is, what is the state of protection around this critical information infrastructure? Mm. I think we need to as allow people to answer if we have adequate mechanism to protect that. We are also looking at it. But, but people, pe people won't be able to answer because they don't have the benefits of the info, the knowledge behind the scenes of right. what it is that we put out there unless persons like yourself will share, will share with us. There are gaps, absolutely. Okay. There are gaps in terms of how ready are we to, to protect, secure this infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But there are also traditional critical information infrastructure areas like our power distribution, energy sector, the health sector. Last month, South Africa suffered um, a power outage. 
their electric car transmission was shut. How did that happen? It was called by ransomware a malicious attack against their electric car infrastructure. You see, the, the, the consequence cut across big businesses, banks who run 24-hour online services, but even market women. Let's say my mother is, uh, you know, is a market woman who sells fish. She needs to run the calls, you know, uh, to keep the, the fish, um, you know, active Present. and preserved so that they, they can be sold in the market the next day. When you lose power, everybody, I mean, suffer the consequence. So it's not really about um, big businesses relying on this, but even ordinary citizen is also impacted. You know, I think it's good to bring this explanation uh, okay. to the level of understanding. Well, I hope that people right. understand it as you've put it, but then let's get to the, the, the finance minister's right. um, submission, which he made in, in parliament. First of all, he talks about creating the foundation for uh, the fo laying the foundation for the creation of a viable technology ecosystem right. in the country. I take it this must have been your um, your advice to the government? Well, I, I think, trust me, the minister responsible for communication is a champion of this area. Very okay. knowledgeable and, and I think she's been leading this process all along. Right. Of course, input into this has come from all stakeholders. You know, budgeting process uh, requires that consultations are okay are done at least and technical input are provided and I think that has led to mm. some of those things. This thing. you know, so when I uh, asked my, my purpose is to get you to explain to us what this what this means. What this means. <laughs> a, a viable <laughs> technology ecosystem in the country. What is this? Uh, I in Parliament when read I did not attend us for the university. <laughs> I mean, it was just about the wedding. No, no it's not about the wedding. It's I, I believe it's about what you want to do because you are excited right. that the money I mean we we the the taxes that are essentially supposed to fund this right. so essentially like you have explained <laughs> there are gaps right. these gaps need to be we need to address these gaps right. so i believe that for people who believe that these gaps need to be addressed by money they're excited that there's this announcement but what is it that we're trying to do to fix this right. these gaps Gives you just point of correction okay um, i'm i'm happy because cyber security is finally being funded at the national level okay. a guarantee fund is being provided that okay. that is okay. society okay. because it doesn't matter how brilliant the ideas sound the initiative if you don't have funds you can track it well, not happy because I'm also a citizen, doesn't like every every other citizen no, who course. is. No, of course. That's why I said that anybody right. who believes that these gaps, uh, there are gaps, and Correct. that these gaps need to be addressed is happy. Right. That we're, we're funding it, just like you are happy. Correct. Just to give us an idea what we seek to do as a country, as a country. to protect our, All right. our, our cyberspace. Essentially, my interpretation with this statement by the minister is, one, we're building a digital ecosystem. In fact, called digital as a way of formalizing the economy. I think the Vice President explains that better in this public discourse. So, yes, the vibrant economy, a robust economy, economy that is self-sustaining, that we can build trust in, mm -hmm. is where your digital infrastructure is protected. You know, so all these initiatives that are being deployed, without having protection mechanism. The consequence is what has been listed uh, in, in that paragraph. Cyber crime, you know, financial crimes coming up. So the idea of building such economy mm -hmm. is to ensure that uh, across the digital chain we are protected. Okay. Government, businesses, individuals, the public, even children are protected. And I think that is what is going to give confidence to have that you know, uh, reliance on, on the digital platform that we are using. Okay. Practical example, Gifty, if I may put this across, is, you know, we are told by the end of 2020, every government service is going to be uh, run on digital platforms. Let's say if you want to apply for passport, I would not certainly like to go and queue. I hate queuing for that purpose. Me certainly. Too. Thank you. <laughs> I wouldn't like to pay Guru Boy okay. to have a service. Mm. So if a digital platform has been put in place for me to utilize. I think it's a Titan. We just need to put the necessary measures in, in place to, so that to this system can stay and provide a reliable service that we all you know, hope to, to see. Mm. If I may ask, are there any specific national cybersecurity initiatives that we're looking to 
implement um, with the funds that uh, that, are, that are being sought? All right, good. With these, these Where taxes? do I start, some other of fact? Um, we have been rated as a formative stage. Uh, we brought in experts to conduct assessment of the state of our readiness. Uh, this is an empirical framework that is used to measure every country where we are. We are at a formative level. Formative level is at every level, international cooperation, criminal justice, business, public sector, things are being done. You know, like ratification of the Budapest Convention, uh, putting up the computer emergency response team at the National Communications Authority, for example, awareness. But these are all at the formative stages, so to speak, and we need to enhance that capability uh, to achieve a level that can give us certain uh, assurance. One, there is um, a policy strategy that has been produced. Currently, it is going through stakeholder consultation for input to be uh, made by other, other, other you know, relevant bodies. Within the strategy document, there are a number of initiatives that have been. So public uh, education awareness is one of them. Uh, capacity building for public sector officials, business support, especially small businesses. Uh, give to my line of work in the previous life. I've handled a number of investigations and multiple SMEs lost money. Sometimes the whole of their capital. Mm. 150 thousand USD stolen through email diversions. They lose their capital and the business collapse. So it is not the fund, in other words, the funding coming in should also be extended to support the private sector. You know, if we say, for example, SME is an engine of growth for the economy, how do we protect them when they are using Facebook to, to trade, mm -hmm. when they are engaging with partners mm -hmm. in terms of correspondence? So that is another huge area that we should also be able to provide the support to protect that particular ecosystem. But criminal justice sector is key. Uh, the minister has announced Ghana has ratified the Budapest Convention, for example. Mm -hmm. That itself is a starting point. Okay. It provides, for example, the mechanism by which we can use international cooperation uh, to deal with the issues. But we need to train the judges. Our prosecutors need to be trained. The CID needs Forensic lab, almost every crime committed today has an element of cyber. How do the citizens want them to deal with the crime? Capacity, not just the lab, but we need it's a tech-driven crime. We need to also equip them. Mm. So these are some of the initiatives that uh, I think the funds are going to support to ensure that overall we achieve this, as you quoted from the budget statement, uh, an environment that is robust and, and, and we can build trust well, in other it, it sounds to me it sounds to me like a great plan, but it still sounds to me as the ideal situation. And 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 and, and, and I think that my viewers would want to know, you know, what are are there any specific things that we're doing with, with all the, the list that you've given me of the things that we need to do to protect our space. Are they things that we are already doing or uh, I mean the are you painting for us the ideal picture? Oh, Kefse, I said this right on this platform. Okay. And I measured where we are. I use the word formative. Formative, level. formative means that, and I use the word every sector mm. of our but cyber I didn't ecosystem. Get the, of driving at All right. the awareness creation has already been done. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. This, this is quite open to public for the past two years. National Cyber awareness Amanda all over the place last year you actually recorded this in publicly okay that's last year alone we we're able to cover more than 7,000 students from second cycles because okay. on child online protection okay. um, I don't want to go into we did this. that we did a bit of that but again you've mentioned more than just that <laughs> okay. and, and I'm just trying to find uh, out whether uh, with all that you've mentioned are we set in motion or you know, you, so you, you just want I, to have it clear I, I, in our mind. I, I Maybe think, we're here. I think without probably mm. blowing our own horns, with respect to what we've achieved within the last two years, and you need to know uh, at the back of no national budget dedicated for that. But I need to compliment World Bank. They are supporting because they brought certain expertise. That is guiding our work. Okay. Um, NCA, the National Communication Authority, has also been supportive. UNICEF, Council of Europe. So these are bilateral collaboration that has brought us to this level. I did mention the computer emergency response team that has been set up by the NCA to help with incident response. Mm -hmm. It is done. 
Uh, Bank of Ghana security operating system also help in the financial sector. That is also done. We've revised the national cybersecurity policy strategy that already is also going through the process. Okay. And you have a cyber security legislation that is also being you know, enacted to give a back and a legal back into some of those initiatives that we have uh, you know, outlined. So okay. I think in terms of, if you look at the budget, in relation to budgets and, and outcome, if we're doing certain mapping, I think it's, it's quite significant quite that we significant. need to sustain that. Okay, right. so what's the target? Where are they, what the formative stage, you say? Uh, uh, what's, what's the next stage usually? Um, uh, okay, that there's, the, 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 there's a startup stage, you know, the model that is used by, we call this cyber security capacity assessment, you know, maturity model. Okay. So we have the starting point, then you get the formative, which is a second level. Okay. You've got the strategic level, and it, you've got the established level, strategic and dynamic. So there are five stages. Okay. We are level two, <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, I mean, countries like Singapore, Israel, the U.S. are up there at a strategic level. Oh. You know? But I think pretty well. With funding coming in, our established states should be guaranteed before the end of 2020. How do these countries that you've mentioned uh, fund their own cyber security? That's a good question. No, I knew you were coming for that. I'll pick the example of the United Kingdom. United Kingdom developers cyber city strategy spanning from 2016 to 2021 how much was added to that 1.9 billion pounds sterling okay it's a five-year plan the amount of budget the budget that was allocated as this figure okay i'll talk about our neighbor togo has set up a cyber security support fund how are they contributing 0.25 percent of the turnover of the operators in that country. Singapore, more than 150 billion uh, USD also allocating for R&D alone. These are the dynamics. Once again, you know, monkeys play by size. I'm not saying that we should be looking for 1.9 <laughs> billion. So let me, <laughs> let me correct that before. Okay. But just to give you a pattern mm. as to what nations are doing. I, I think the pattern is it's really clear. I mean, Correct. the point is clear that people are investing Correct. in this area. But then the, so you mentioned Togo. And you said right. that Togo, for Togo, for example, is right. being funded by operators. But here in Ghana, you know, based on the budget review, it's going to be funded by taxpayers. You know what? Uh, and and give you, let's be very frank here. Mm. Every government in, in its wisdom uh, has that determination to identify what is the best mechanism to fund cyber security. What as an advisor you do is to make a case, bring the prevailing models you know, for government to make a decision on okay. that. And I think we have voted our government in power to trust them to make the best decision for us. But, uh, but my, my main interest is for the citizens to appreciate that. The idea of founding cyber security through either a budget allocation, mm -hmm. either through a fund, either through a tax, is not alien to the world that we live in. We've okay. got to protect our digital infrastructure. Certainly. I mean, right. that's a point that everybody will, ag right. will agree. I, I do agree on that point. So right. I was just feeding off from the information uh, as it pertains in other countries. You mentioned, mentioned this huge amount, this monstrous amount that the United Kingdom, for example. Uh, this is not more I don't want to disclose here. <laughs> oh, really? You know, so, so you, you talked about how they've done this, but if a lot of people have said we don't need to reinvent the wheel. People are doing it, so how are they doing, doing it? Which is what brings me back to Togo. Uh, Togo is not t taxing people. And I'm saying this based on the preamble we started the conversation with, that people Correct. have raised concerns about you know, where, 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 we go, where, where are we taking this money to mm. because it's, again, coming from, um, um, from individual taxes. Mm. But I'm sure that's a conversation we may not finish um, here um, uh, um, if we want to start it at all. <laughs> I'm really happy you've, you've touched on that. Once again, uh, I think we need to be open and discuss. Uh, trust me. The bill that is being developed by the Ministry of Communication, working with the National Cyber Security Intervention Advisory Council, mm -hmm. uh, provide mechanism for a cyber security firm to establish. I see the increment in the communication services as, as mm -hmm. one component. Okay, mm -hmm. there could be alternative arrangements because we are doing certain cost 
quantification, how much do we need? I've told you we have a revised strategy mm -hmm. that ought to be implemented within the five-year period. And as the UK has done, they have a dedicated amount. In a similar model is being built up, we can then present to government. For the next five years, due to the current states, we will need this amount of money. There could be other source of funding mm -hmm. you know, to support this process. But once again, the conversation is for the public to suggest other alternative means. Technically, we need to bring the best practices elsewhere. So we can all discuss and as a nation make the best decision. Okay. Certainly, certainly right. so. Again, I'm just going to wrap up this conversation by asking you to assure Ghanaians to what extent um, our cyberspace is secured. You keep on asking this question. Yes, and do. even this conversation, you've asked three times. Uh, have I? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, and, well, I and, guess and, it's very important. And I, I think maybe to, be, to, to sound real, in the world of information technology, you know, it's very difficult to say you won't be attacked. You know, countries like Bulgaria, for example, their national revenue database was compromised. But Bulgaria is pretty doing well. In Singapore last year, they also suffered. U.S. their office management system. You know, these are countries which have attained a certain level of cybersecurity readiness. However, I think it's a question of assurance. How well, how are we assuring our citizens with respect to the current protection? What has been done? Even a formative level, if you take the banking sector, because Bank of Ghana has introduced, I mean, working with the ministry, has introduced a directive on uh, cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. And now the banks are complying, they are implementing them. Okay. They are finding money, even when there is no money, to implement that. That has given us certain assurance. Our financial sector, which is so critical, you know, we have that assurance in that space. There is another critical sector, let's say the telecommunication sector, which our life depends on. Online banking runs because there is a telecommunication operator. That space is also being looked at. Uh, as I said, NITA, the government agency responsible for IT, is also implementing a similar system. I think I can, I can use this to provide you with certain assurance, but we got to act quickly. Um, and, you know, I won't say we can be on top of the, of the criminals, but we need to catch up, uh, considering the kind of attacks mm. that we experience, and not just locally, but also at the international level. At the international level, right. Dr. Nshifuansi, I could thank you so much for coming. And um, when I ask, I'm sure that it's because uh, I, I believe Ghanaians love to be <laughs> three times. I didn't right. realize that was three right. times, maybe in, a d in different ways. But, well, hopefully it gives you some assurance um, that our cyberspace is secure. But like he's saying, it's not the time to relax at all. Uh, we're at the formative level, so that's like level two. When there are about five levels, you say, right. to go. So, yeah, there's still a long way to go. But it's up to us, like you're saying, for us to discuss whether or not we want it to come from the taxpayer or we want government to find some way, somehow, to fund this. But it is still a necessary intervention. Dr. Entry, Albert Entribuesiako is National Cybersecurity Advisor. Thank you very much for coming once again. Sir. Time, Gifty, for your frankness on the subject matter. Thank <laughs> you're you. Welcome. All right, thank you.